Okay, um, first of all, just tell me uh, who you are and the organization you represent. Okay, my name is Pendomaro and I'm here to represent Healthcare Without Harm and Health and Environment Alliance. So these are organizations working on environment, environmental issues and health issues. So basically we're here because we're concerned about climate change and health. And uh, we've brought together a group of medical professionals to come here today to give the message that, you know, climate change is not just an environmental issue, it's also a health issue. It's going to impact health. But if we address climate change, we have a lot of benefits for health. So our message is kind of like, what's good for climate is good for health. Okay. And um, we also believe that medical professionals are very trusted people, they're very trustworthy. I mean, they're neutral in this process. That's, they stand to gain basically nothing. And what they're coming to do here is um, try to act as, well, not trying to act, to bring forth this health message and um, trying to convince negotiators, or everybody here really, just to share this message that climate change concerns you and me and everybody else, you know? So health is generally the issue here and um, whether we tackle environmental issues, whether we tackle climate, reduce uh, emissions or whatever it is we're talking about, we must realize that we're all going to suffer the consequences. So let's all get together and right. try to see what we can do. I mean, can you be specific about the, the health effects on, on, on the population uh, from climate change? What, what kind of things might people suffer from? Well, apart from increased disease, but I have here Dr. Mike yeah. Wilkes, and I'll let him uh, carry on on that angle. So we've got... Um, diseases, you know, kind of like the spread of diseases such as malaria, simply because climate is, uh, weather is changing in the mountain areas. We have cases already in Kenya, we have Tanzania, we have um, things like um, just, you know, the, the temperature extremes we had in Europe in 2003, uh, a heat wave where a lot of people died in France and in other parts. And most of the people that are affected by this are the vulnerable, the elderly the children, the very young, the poor who have no access to medical care. So health, I mean, yeah, so yeah, sorry. What I'd like to say is that, um, so it's impacting on different parts of populations, but the ones who are suffering more are the most vulnerable. And um, what we're trying to do is make sure that all this, pe all this impacts of climate change are taken into account as well as the benefits. In Europe we've done a study Heal and Healthcare Without Harm looking at um, what would happen, the economic benefits of the EU's moving from 20% emission reduction target to 30% emission reduction target. And here we find that we have some economic benefits, some savings of up to 30 billion euros per year each year from 2020. So, I mean, apart from just the health benefits, we've also got a huge economic benefit. And in the time now when we have um, budget deficits, when you've got um, economic ministers looking for, to cut budgets in many parts of Europe, I think this is a very legitimate issue to bring forth to the table and to try also to show people that it's about health and it's also about the economy. So it's good for health and it's also good for our economy. Okay, thank you. So, thank Do you. Dr. Wilkes, the, 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 um, I mean, is this, is, is this message finding some kind of resonance so far among the it's negotiators beginning, here? It's beginning to. I mean, if you look at the, the draft um, texts at the moment, uh, health has managed to achieve the notable position of being a footnote somewhere on one page. So we've obviously got a way to go. Uh, I'm a physician working in the UK, but I'm a board member of Healthcare Without Harm, and I've also been involved with medical organizations in the EU. And I think that what you will hear at so many meetings here is an understanding about the risks to health of climate change, vector-borne diseases, unfamiliar diseases in new places, disasters, flooding, heat-related deaths. And, and we can go on banging that message, <clears throat> which is really important because we need mitigation adaptation policies to deal with some of the inevitable health consequences. But what we need to make uh, more play with, and, and we're beginning to get some understanding of this. What's interesting, as soon as we explain this new narrative to people, it's like, oh, we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the narrative, is, as Pendo says, is, is simply this, that, that if you reduce greenhouse gases, you, you get healthier people. Uh, and the cost of, of actually reducing greenhouse gases 
is largely met out of the health savings you then produce. So as, as Pendo says, the latest study that was done um, by Healthcare Without Harm and Hill in relation to the EU, that 30.5 billion pounds extra saving per year on health that you get by going from 20 to 30 percent greenhouse gas reductions, two thirds of that, uh, sorry, two thirds of the cost of doing that is returned in your, in your health care savings. So it's a fantastic investment. And of course the other thing is, if you look at it in purely economic terms, um, which many people may find attractive, even if they're climate change skeptics, is that you know, it's, it's something that's, that's worth spending money on. I mean, who's, who's, who's not going to argue with people being healthier? And you can, you can apply this to any country in any kind of political view of, of climate change and still have a good argument. And you can also apply it at the personal level right up to the global, because at a personal level, if you, uh, you know, reduce your meat consumption, you take more exercise, you will benefit yourself by really an amazing amount. You reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke. And we don't know some of the mechanisms for this, but we know that fitter people have a lower risk of dementia, we know they have a lower risk of breast cancer in women. We don't know why necessarily, but it's a fact. And then you push that up to the national and then the global scale. And what you will then be able to argue is that it's well worth spending money on greenhouse gas reduction because you get a healthier and economically a more productive population. And, and we need to keep pushing this message. It's beginning to gain some traction here. I suspect it will not affect the outcome here but it's something that we need to widen our collaboration. For instance, this, this is not just a health argument, but it's an economic one, and we need to work with other interest groups to push the economic message. Is it gaining traction among the other interest groups? Is it gaining traction among the politicians uh, sitting a few kilometres away from here? It does when you sit down and explain it to them. Mm. Uh, they haven't come here with that understanding, and that may be partly our failure. I think. Uh, one of the things that's happened at previous COPs is that interest groups have tended to talk to each other. Uh, we've been, you know, accept this, we've been criticised as, 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 as health uh, activists for, you know, talking to the converted. Uh, I think we all find more comfort doing that. And, and, and so we know we need to do better to publicise this way outside the healthcare community. So the answer is slowly, but not as much as we would like. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh... Let's break out of it.